straight into senior security. So I need two fifty cell trades, so I'm still doing the same size trades as the Lebowski. And actually normally we do our cucumbers in the uh, 72 because they're very fast growing in the 72 and they get them out of the field. seeds of this Corinto cucumber. It's a high performing greenhouse cucumber. So we're going to try that out this year. So the seed is very expensive. But only one bed of cucumbers in here. We'll do some other cucumbers in the tunnels in here. The reason we're doing cucumbers in the tunnels and not peppers and eggplants like we normally would. Those are actually going to have to go in the field this year, so we're going to have to make sure that they get started nice and early. So that as soon as it's warm enough outside, we get them planted out. Um, the reason that we're doing these cucumbers in the tunnels and uh, not the peppers and the eggplants is last year we had uh, It comes in and it cuts. It's got these pincers and it cuts the. I don't know the problem here. The water's not flowing. So there's always kind of stuff like this going on. It could be because uh, the pipes froze outside last night. Uh, it's water weather. So hopefully it'll warm up soon in a second. We'll get more than just a trickle out of here. Our seating for that fixing the hose. But uh, just back to the tarnished pond bug, uh, which those guys will do. Oh, the flow's getting a little bit better here. Uh, tarnished pond bug, what they'll do is uh, they come in with their pincers and they cut the head of the plant. So they can use the plant with pepper and they'll just chop it right off. They fill the plant basically and it'll I don't know if we go off that, but it's not just a production that we do work. So, because we don't use any type of pipes here, and uh, we haven't started using any bio controls for like predatory, to buy predatory insects, and we just have to try to track them. Uh, we have no way to really control this, so we can't be putting it in so many machines back in the tunnel this year. <laughs> moistened up a little bit extra. I prepped it last night after I was done seeding the cherry tomatoes. Uh, I was tired, but uh, you know, I had a bit of a few left to me, and uh, I just did that. So uh, I could get ahead of the start on the day today. Hey guys, so my seeding is right here. Cucumber seed. These are very expensive, so I'm going to be careful opening this. It actually says that on the package, and for the reason, this one the seeds could be at the top of this pack here. And you don't want them getting stuck to the glue and the seal of the packaging. And you don't want them to fall out and lose them. Seed. This is the first row cucumber seed. 
hunt and do the greenhouse. We got 100 seeds. We're going to do 250 flats. <laughs> Got every last one in the pack. Let's see what this guy's look like right here. So that's the cucumber seed. And uh, these are fairly big seeds, so they're going to be very easy to singulate. I'm still going to use my cedar here. It's just that with a bigger seed, you're going to use a bigger hole opening on the front end so you can rotate. These tools are very expensive, these little seeders. They're $50, maybe like $500. Alright, guys, we've got our multi cell here, 50 cell for our cucumbers. And I'm just gonna use the soil here to fill it up. I'm gonna start building it right on the side here. I know that you can't see it quite as well, actually. Um, it's just that when the uh, the tub here is completely full of mix and it's been properly moistened. Uh, it's got a good humidity in it. It's very quick actually to just pop and uh, kind of mix in a bit here to see that there is a little bit of the heat that's dried out overnight. Uh, that'll even it itself out. And do like more, hopefully, this will take the camera too much on you guys. Once it's not flat, or if it's not burned, it gets straight down there. So I put it on the side. I've got my soil so very close. So we do C, U, 23, 03, March, and then the variety, which is Corinto, I believe that's C, O, which I O, R, letters. So that's what the tag looks like. Hopefully that's not reverse chain. check and follow the instructions on the seed pack it's going to tell you how best to deal with the crop that you're doing and every crop is different and they've got tests to prove you know what temperatures and conditions are best for their crop they're the ones providing the seed so they they know much better than you do um, even if you've got a lot of experience so if i look here in the seed pack it says a half inch deep and if I look at the size of one of these seeds, you can see it there. The seed is about a quarter inch long, and usually you want to plant twice the depth. Uh, the size of your seed, so quarter inch seed, half inch depth. Alright, let's see these Corinto cucumbers. So normally when I'm doing this kind of stuff, I turn uh, off some music, but uh, it's a copyright of one on it, can't do that one. Recording videos for YouTube for you guys. 
so you know, there's going to be a time of the day where I turn off the camera and kind of get the tunes properly open. Right now, just got the uh, sound of the band's uh, voice uh, tapping the uh, cedar here. So it's nothing complicated. I'm just tapping to slowly ease them in here, and uh, I'm planting about twice as deep as I was doing for the tomatoes. I was doing the tomatoes at about a quarter inch depth, but these are very seed, so we're going to do a half inch depth. And we're going to get all 100 in here all at once. If I was doing more flats, I might seed one flat, finish the soil on top of it, water it down, excess, etc., get the dome on top of it, get it written down. Um, if I was doing like 10 flats or something, I might do it more one by one uh, in that sense, just so that if, I have, like if I'm seeding 10 flats, it might dry out a little bit in the time that it takes me to seed the first one and when I get to the last one, so I want to make sure that it stays moist and that the seeds don't stay exposed to on the sunlight. Um, with just two here, maybe with three, four, I might also do the same thing if I could get a place out nicely in front of me. Because uh, the more that you chain things together, it will go faster. Um, you just don't want to exaggerate. It depends on your manpower. You know, if you're two people, it be different too. If you have one person filling the trays, the other person seeding, and the person filling the trays, maybe watering or something, kind of like that. You can do things bigger batches. Uh, because it's just me here in the greenhouse, I have to think about. How long is it going to take to do everything realistically? I think. I'm going to get these cutter done. That's going to be all the crops seeded that we're growing in the greenhouse. Technically, we're going to do two other little crops as uh, experiments this year, apart from the ginger and the turmeric. So already, we're we're getting a lot more productivity in the same space as last year. So last year in here we grew tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, like we're prepping here. Uh, however, uh, we've got a better variety of, of cucumbers. This year we're doing Corinto. Uh, last year I had tried, tried another one. Um, I actually forget the name of it right now. It's uh, good blank for me. Uh, normally we do market wars, but I don't believe that that's what they were, uh, and the, the result was not the best. Uh, so we're going to keep adding some compost into this greenhouse, and uh, this spring I think I'm actually going to avoid tilling the soil. Uh, if I can, I'll just get the grubby done in there, uh, maybe pass the bow, add some Black earth and compost, and went uh, right into it. Started tilling. Send an email back asking, you know, is there another kind of fish promotion oil that is allowed for organic? Uh, is the one I had sent them that has an organic label? I guess it's not one of their approved ones, so I just have to try and find out which one is good for the post air. Hopefully, be able to do that. So, right away, now that I've got these both seated, I'm going to put the labels in the front right corner. 
got a few extra seeds here. I got four extra seeds. And uh, I'm going to do more flats than this. So that means that they gave me 104, which is a nice little bonus. So I'm going to put just two kind of randomly in the corner on each flat as like a backup. And we may be able to use them. We may be able to. We may not. We may thin them out later. But we're, we're definitely going to see them. Placing them, um, so I'm going to be a bit more confused. Uh, uh, one, two, so then after this, I'm going to get water down. Water the, the dome lid kind of covered up. You know, the uh, cucumber is like a bit of cooler temperature. And tomatoes, I check the seed pattern, it's going to tell me exactly. It says uh, seed temperature, soil temperature between 10 and 21 degrees. So 21, I would pretty much say. That's it, they're watered down. I just gotta write it in the register. Yeah, I haven't mentioned is that I've actually got two places already that I write this information down. And one of the reasons I do this is sometimes you can actually lose your information, in which case, uh, you know, it's good to have backup. So I'm gonna enter in the register March 23rd, cucumber. Varieties Corinto, and I did a hundred. The seed is from Johnny's. There we go. And then I got this guy. So Old Farmers Almanac. It's a basically like my farming diary. So I've I've used it last year a little bit. I'm just like sectioning off where I had written last year, right in 2021. And underneath, giving myself some new space in my community too, and then that way I can go back through in the winter and see what I did every day, and what the conditions were, I write down like was it sunny, what the temperature was, you know, uh, was it rain, how much. Uh, so today we have seating, and then I'll have a list of everything I do, but here, cucumber, Corinto. 
150 cell. So, you know, in this, I'm actually putting the cell size, which in the other one I'm not writing down, so I do have some extra information. Uh, but I'm just going to practice to have multiple backups. And then the written register is eventually going to get to the computer, which would be good to back up weekly, ideally, but I don't. I do it like once or twice a year, kind of like uh, as needed. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So next we're going to get into seeding some cantaloupe. This is the first time we've ever done this on the farm. This variety is called Divergent. We only bought 15 seeds, but we've got 19 here in the packet. So that's perfect. It's dry, it's orange. It's a bit dusty, but it's good. Um, it has 18 cells. So we've got 19 seeds. Perfect. But I think it's for orange like this. It doesn't really matter about the twigs and such. So I'm going to take straight from the bag instead of our sifted mix for this, this flat right here. So, just come over here. I'm not going to pull it all the way. Bo is giving me a hand right here. He's very curious. First time back in three times. This year is very happy. I was trying to get it in yesterday with us. And he didn't want to come. I had to lead him over with the leash. And now he's happy as ever. But he just wasn't understanding. I guess it was a while since last year. Got out of his routine. But he's very happy to be here with me right now. So yeah, I'm just happy he's uh hey boy, are you happy to be here? Yeah. yeah he's uh halfway filled up. He's smiling. And uh I'll get him watered down once they're halfway full. And then I'll fill it up a bit more, water down again. Until all the way full. We'll see them on the other screen. So, hopefully, you can see that it's, it's full to about here on the pot, about half. So, I'm going to water those down. So, as you guys saw, there's a lot of prep time for inch in terms of just getting the soil into the pots and moist. But because there's only 15, uh, sorry, 18 cells here this is going to go extremely fast and i'm i'm going to guess it's going to be a half inch but let's just double check our seed pack make sure we're doing the right thing oh it's actually a quarter inch per seed so not quite as deep as the cucumbers so we're not going to put it that deep and these guys are also going to love the heat so We'll get that on the heat map. Just for curiosity, let's know exactly. These guys want to grow at 24 degrees. So right there in with the tomatoes, 24 to 27 for a tomato, 24 for the cantaloupe. So, you know, at night when this place is at 20, it's not quite there, but it should be good enough. And then during the day, we'll get some spikes because of that sun. Uh, We'll be, we'll be good to go, especially with the heat mats there at 30. Should have no problem getting these guys to germinate. I've never actually had cantaloupes uh, harvested at a, at a good eatable size before, but I grew them outside. These ones were actually going to go in the greenhouse, so we're going to try to see how it works. Uh, basically, the plan is to try and find little corners uh, on the side of the greenhouse, up around the pots of turmeric and ginger, where we're going to plant these cantaloupes and have them grow up the sides <laughs> at the greenhouse. Uh, we're going to see how that's going to work for us. But that's the plan here with this little experiment is to try and make the most of this greenhouse space because it's expensive to heat. And uh, we'll keep saying, uh, so we want to be able to get as much produce out of this area as possible. So, I'm going to get the tag here. So, we've got a cantaloupe. So, we'll do C A N. C A could be cauliflower, right? So, C A N. The date 23 23. And the variety divergent. So, we'll do div. 
our label. There we go. Got our nice flat stake right there, ready to go into the front right. Got our flat. That's next to this cantaloupe. We're going to get it watered down. Register. So, register here. I'm gonna write March 23rd for the date. Cantaloupe. So the more time you say the things, you know what our heart so that my variety is divergent. And we had 19. seed packs getting wet there. Luckily for us, I mean, they're still important, but these are the old seed packs that don't actually have any seed in them. We're going to move our plan to, there's a little water here from moving the wet flag draining through the bottom. Uh, but I have to save these, show the certifier uh, proof of which seeds I used here on the farm. You guys over here from Fairweather Farm, I'm just going to get things closed up in the So we're going to put our domes on, plants, and uh, it hasn't been very sunny today, and everything is quite moist, so I'm not too worried about the moisture, I don't want to throw water, so I'm actually not going to take the time right now to, to moisten the lids. eating our seeds and your vegetables. <laughs> so we're just gonna get the seed lids on. We'll try and do a perfect here. I'll have a little chat or finish up putting the drawings on this place. So the thing is is that uh, lettuce in particular uh, germinates at cooler temperatures. I have to check the package to tell you exactly what temperature. But lettuce does germinate at significantly cooler temperatures than something like tomatoes. And the tomatoes can use 24 to 27 Celsius. <clears throat> the lettuce are better at a temperature that's roughly more like 20, but I'm not sure exactly. I have to check, as I said, the seed packaging does vary. Uh, 
The only problem is that we were using the shade of a tree and it would rain, and you would have water drops falling from the tree onto the flats, and that would displace it with the soil. Um, but as you can see, I've got all the flats covered up for the night. That should have a tube that just came on for the heating, which means it just dip below 20 in here. And that's Bo. Hey, Bo, are you cold a little bit? He's not so sure about being in here. Hey, bud. Come here, buddy. Good boy. Hey. Hey, guys. Andrew here from Fairweather Farm. Uh, so I've been seeing other stuff. I haven't been recording every little thing that I see here in the greenhouse. Uh, I'm trying to do things once I have something to talk about. So here uh, we're going to be doing some green onions. Um, and the thing that's interesting here is that I actually need to use... This little scale. Okay. So I hit the tire to zero the scale. If there's a bit of wind, it might fluctuate a little bit. I'm going to weigh how much seed I have here. Because basically, there's a thousand seeds in theory in this package. Uh, and I want to do two flats of 500. So, what I need to do is I need to weigh out the seed pack, find out exactly how much the weight of the whole seed pack is, and then I'm going to weigh out half. And I'm going to see half in one flat and half the other, and that's going to give me roughly 500. Instead of counting, you know, to all the way to 500, to two piles of 250. I'm just going to weigh the whole thing, do some quick math. So here, I've got them all, almost all of them. Try not to drop any. I actually only dropped one, so that was pretty good. A few left. It's always in the corner of the package that this happens. <laughs> So we've got all the seeds. <clears throat> so for a thousand green onion seeds, it weighs 4.15 grams. Uh, oh, 4.30 4 grams. That's so going to be divided by 2, 2.15 each. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just empty out some of the seed here into my head seeder until all I have left here is 2.15, 2.6. I need to take a little bit more. I'm going to try that to go over 2.08. So I took out a little bit too much. I'm going to say that's about half, 2.10. This is going to be about 2.15. Oops. I just changed by that setting. The setting. The scale. Eight in grams. There we go. Okay. So 
Okay, so I have 500 seeds in the lid here. And I have another 500 in my cedar. So I'm gonna select a fairly small hole for this cedar. And then what I'm gonna do is I've already made the trenches in here because it takes a little bit of time, but basically I make five trenches. Seed some green onions. And just so you know, the same technique about the, the trenches here, it applies with onions and leeks as well. So the trick here is I'm gonna keep tapping as normal, but I have to watch where I'm placing the seeds here. And I have to also monitor how much I have in the whole hopper altogether. It's better that you do the full five lines and then you don't run out of seed and you kind of go back over with some parts. Then if you go too heavy and you're not able to do five lines because then you've got like too much seed in some areas you fought and some part of the fought level, so that's wasted area. And then what I'm also doing here at the same time, I'm trying to wash and make sure that I'm spacing out the seeds. So I'm not trying to dump all in one area, I'm trying to draw like a bit of a line. Sometimes they hide, so you have to know where you drop some, and you basically just keep moving. You're always moving, so you're tapping, and you're pulling your cedar back at the same time. And then I'm kind of just like keeping in general on it, how much I have left. And, and the seed hopper here in the container, so that's two rows of the five. This is the third row. Once I'm halfway down here, I'll be about. So now I'm about halfway. I've still got a good amount of seed. So I think that I've done this time a fairly good job. But I'm not putting too much. But also still putting enough to do an even spread. Um, these. Oh, that seed there, I did it a little bit too, a bit too much. So I'm going to spread them out a little bit by hand. Skip over the next area. Sometimes it can happen to you a little drunk. Um, once you're on the second to last line, though, like I am not as worried about it. Just like if you start dumping early, you can dump it. You into a problem where you're going to see here on the last line. And if I get to the end and there's any left to receive, then I'll just pass it back over. And I'll do my best to try and pass back the area where I think. Not mocking, so I do actually have some seed left, which means it's a good job. So I'm trying to run over it quickly over all five lines. I kind of took care of it. Kind of just more rapid motion. And that worked out pretty good. We just ran out of seeds. A couple of lots of ones in there. And there you go.